I got this Chevy truck behind me. I suspect it has a blown head gasket. Let's do a compression test on here. I'm going to show you every single tip I know about how to compression test these Vortec V8 engines. Let's get in here and check it out. Trust me, I'm a mechanic. We got a 4.8 Vortec V8 right here. It's the same on the 5.3 and the 6.0. V8, we got four on this side, four on this side. We're going to test them all. So I make me a little chart right here. Got the spark plugs like this. Got front so I know which ones it is. Got the other side right here. We're going to come back and write the PSI that we come up with on each one so that we know what the cylinders are. They're supposed to be within about 10% of each other. If you have one that's like 90, the others are like 180, you know something's wrong with that cylinder. Blown head gasket, bad piston ring, something's going on. Here's a compression tester right here. This is the gauge in right here. It's going to go up when we turn the key. Then we have this end right here. And this end is what screws in to the spark plug holes. You know, it's got these O-rings on there, so it'll seal up, hold the pressure, so we can check it. Got to make sure you got the right spark plug hole adapter on the end of it. For these trucks, it is a 14 millimeter. You know, a lot of guys question the accuracy of their gauges. You want to make sure you get a good one. That way, you know it's accurate. So you can see it goes from zero to 300 PSI. We just need it to read about 200 PSI. Really, it's going to be around 150 to 180 psi on one of these good vortec v8 engines but we're going to do it a couple times on each cylinder see what it's reading fuel pump relay right here we're going to pull it so that it doesn't send fuel to the injectors because we don't want the fuel sitting in the top of the cylinders causing us problems so get in there take every single spark plug out make sure that you have clear access to each spark plug hole we're going to pull the fuel pump relay so it's not squirting fuel into the injectors and we're going to plug in the compression tester to every single spark plug hole one at a time and we're going to record the results it's this one right here so we're going to get it out of there just like that it's not going to cause us problems not going to send any fuel to the injectors now for the fun part we got to screw this thing in the spark plug holes these things are a pain to get down in there you know you got to really reach down in there normally start from the front work my way to the back but you just got to get it screwed in one by one by one you can also take out injector one and injector two fuses, and that way there's no power going to your injectors. So that's this 15 amp fuse and this 15 amp fuse, I'm gonna pop them out. When you do this, you gotta have a fully charged battery. Sometimes I even break out jump starter like this, hook it up, that way we get the best rating possible. All right, I got the gauge hooked up to the first cylinder right here. I got a helper in the truck, he's gonna turn the key. All right, turn the key. Keep going. Stop. All right, there you go. Man, we got good pressure. We got, what is that, like 190 PSI. That is looking really good on that first cylinder. We're going to write it down and rinse and repeat. We're going to go through every single cylinder until we see what they're all reading. Let the pressure out right here. Wrote it down right there, 190 PSI, seven more to go. So that really flexible hose is hard to get down in there. Sometimes you can get you an adapter like this, screw in the spark plug hole, pop the compression tester on the end of there. You know, it takes a long time to go through eight of them with that flexible hose, getting it in there, you know, getting the thread started. This is rough work down in here, man. Getting this one down back, the back cylinder back here, there's no room. You gotta keep fighting with it to get it in there. But I finally got it in. There I go. Okay, about 180. Turn it. Stop. Stop. Got about 190 PSI. This cylinder's good. We're at the front right here. Now we gotta do those three, we'll be done. All right, so here's the results of our test right here. Man, this engine's looking good. We got 185 to up to 200 PSI on that one cylinder right there. You know, 190, 185, 195, 190, 190, 185, 200, 185. They're all within about 10% of each other. That's the rule of thumb here. You know, if you got one that's at 50 PSI or, you know, this one's at 190, they're all at 190. Oh, we got 20 PSI, even 100 PSI. You know, if they're wildly different, you say, oh, that one's got a problem. You know, it's the lowest one out of all of these. 
But just looking at this right here, our test results, I'd say this motor's in great shape. Compression, you know, blown head gasket, worn piston rings, isn't a problem with this engine. These are great test results right here. If you've got a motor, you're wondering what the compression should be, shoot for 200 PSI. This motor has 170,000 miles on it. I'm impressed with this result. All right, let's take two minutes and talk about compression gauges here. So here's the one I was using in this video. Uh, you know, it's just a standard compression gauge. It goes from zero to 200 PSI. For gasoline engines, that's plenty. You know, for diesel engines, we need to read up to like 1,000 PSI. It doesn't matter. For gasoline engines, you know, zero to 300 PSI will do just fine. So, brand, this one is Actron, I believe, and I just got this at the local auto parts store, but there is a ton of different makes and models of these things. It doesn't really matter which brand you get as long as it's decent quality. What you're really looking for is an accurate reading uh, between the cylinders. So, you know, guys will get these, and this happened a lot with outboards and boats, you know, you'd go and buy a used engine, you do a compression test on it. Man, those numbers are low. I was only getting 130 per cylinder. Well, the gauge was off. 20 PSI, it was actually 150 PSI per cylinder. So you can run into that kind of thing. You just wanna make sure that it's a decent quality for what it is, as long as you have accurate readings, you know, across the board, you should be in pretty good shape. When you go get one of these, make sure that it has that little Schrader valve right in there because if it doesn't, then every time you turn the engine over, pump, 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 it'll just lose the air pressure out of here. You won't get a good reading. So make sure whatever you get has that little Schrader valve right here. Um, and then, yep, this one doesn't have it down here. It's just on the hose. So this one works real well. I got this old one here, Allen Kalamazoo. So garage sale, state sale, fine. That thing's nice, man. That's a glass gauge. But the hose on it is all weird. I had to wrap tape on it. You know, they got these ones that you press in the cylinder and hold it in like this. Don't get that. Get you one that'll screw in. Don't get the kind that just presses in. They're not any good. Um, you know, it'll just leak. But... So, you know, they'll come with adapters, uh, just depending on what you're working on. That's a 14 millimeter here, Chevy thread. That's the typical standard thread for spark plugs, 14 millimeter. Uh, you know, we got 12 millimeter here, dirt bike, stuff like that. Then we have another M14 right here. So, it just depends on what you're working on. But for these Vortec V8 engines, just the standard stuff will do. It's 14 millimeter, and it's got those O-rings to seal. All right, that's it for the video. That's how to compression test one of these Chevy Vortec V8 truck engines. So we got a good result on this. You can see this engine is not blown. There's no blown head gasket, nothing like that. We got really high PSI readings. If you got low PSI readings, you know something's wrong with the engine. You can dive a little bit deeper. There's also a cylinder leak down test. It'll give you more accurate results of what's going on inside the engine with the piston rings and stuff like that. But as far as this goes, this engine is good. Check out on the next video. Don't forget to drop me a huge thumbs up down below. Don't forget to subscribe for more Chevy truck tip videos in the future. I got plenty more where this came from. Later.